And the final presentation of the session is um, also our best paper award, or one of our best paper awards for uh, iClear. It's on ordered neurons, uh, integrating tree structures into recurrent neural networks. And um, before, I, uh, before we start the presentation, I would like to present the, uh, the best paper award to uh, Yikang uh, Shen, who will be the presenter on behalf of all the uh, authors as well. So hi everyone, I'm Yi Kang Shen from University of Montreal. I'm going to present this joint work with Sean Tan, Alessandro Sodoni, and Aaron Corville. So our work is based on a widely, widely accepted assumption that natural language has a latent tree-like structure. It could be a constituency tree or some other formalities. In this work, we focus on the constituency tree. As you can see in the figure, each constituent is a sequence of words that function as a single unit in a repre to represent a meaning. A constituent tree is constructed based on the relation between those constituents. So why this tree structure is important? Because it can provide a natural way to compute the hierarchical representation with increasing level of abstraction. And this is one of the key intuitions behind the success of deep learning. Meanwhile, we also want to use this tree structure to model the compositional effect of natural language to solve some very difficult natural language understanding tasks, such as natural language inference. As for the natural language generation, the tree structure will help with long-term dependency problem by providing a shortcut for both information and the gradient. Given this latent tree structure assumption, we want to ask one question. Could we provide a new inductive bias so that the model could induce the latent tree structure from a downstream task without supervised signal for the structure? And also, the model should leverage the induced structure to achieve a stronger performance on the task. To achieve this, there are two types of models that researchers have been working on. The first type is based on the recurrent structure. For example, the spin model sequentially read the input from the buffer and use a stack to store the representation for the constituent. And the second type of model is based on the recursive structure. For example, the recursive neural network composed word level representation into phrase level and sentence level with the same compositional function. And there are many interesting works following these two lines of research. However, for most of those previous work, they either use the tree structure given by an external parser, or they try to make hard decision to infer the uh, discrete tree structure. So unlike those previous work, we try to softly and actively allocate neurons to represent different constituents. As shown in the figure, we split the hidden states into smaller chunks. Each chunk will represent a constituent that is active at current time step. And the relation between those constituents can be, described, can be described by a simple rule. While a larger constituent ends, all nested small constituents also end. To simulate this, we introduce a in new inductive bias, order neurons. This inductive bias infers a certain order to the neurons, so that when a higher rank neuron is, is erased, all lower rank neurons should also be erased. By doing this, we effectively link the larger constituents to a high rank neurons and the smaller constituents to lower rank neurons because the information for larger constituents should last longer than the information for smaller constituents. So how does this actually work? Suppose we have the tree structure on the left and we are currently reading the second word, x2. We need to erase all neurons up to the second level of hierarchy and then write the new information into them. We also want to preserve the information in the third level of hierarchy so that we can use it in the future. We, have, we can achieve this by using a forget gate, 
that is zero for the first two chunks and one for the last chunk. Then we, we proceed to the 10 steps three. Here we only need to erase the first chunk to write new information, so our forget gate is zero for the first chunk and one for the rest of them. And you might, as you might notice, we can actually use the number of zero in the forget gate to, per, to pass the sentence. And I will explain this later in the experiment section. So the idea is quite simple. How can we implement this? To model the new forget gate, we propose a new activation function, QMAX, which is a combination of softmax and cumulative sum. The softmax will provide a distribution for the, period, for the position that we want to erase up to. And the cumulative sum will compute the actual gate value. This value is continuous and monotonically non-decreasing. So given this new activation function, we can parameterize the new gates as shown in the slides. Besides the previous introduc uh, introduced forget gate, we also found it's very useful to have a similar but reversed input gate so that we can control the writing operation on the hidden states. We name those gates as master forget gate and master input gate. In practice, those gates can have overlaps. This where we want to both write and remember. So by adding those new, new gates into LSTM model, we introduce a new own LSTM model. Here is the new gating mechanism, and the, and the new F hat and I hat will be used to replace the original forget and input gate in LSTM. To evaluate this new model, we train it on language model task and evaluate on metric including perplexity, unsupervised parsing, and syntactic evaluation. So let's start with the language modeling part. We use the standard PTB dataset following the pre-process proposed in Microlop 2012. As shown in the table, ONSTM outperform AWDSTM which is one of the strongest LSTM baseline. However, so there are many recent models achieve stronger performance than this, than our model. But we believe that those models, they provide orthogonal contributions against the new older neurons. For example, the mix of softmax model. So we have trained the model on language modeling task. Now we are going to extract the tree structure from the model. Given the idea pre uh, previously presented, we can estimate the separateness between the current and previous time step by looking at how much the model forget. So we compute the expectation of the closed gates with the equation showing in the middle for each time step and except the first one. So we named this expectation as syntactic distance following our previous paper. To build this path tree, we find, we find the position where the maximum distance is. Then we break the sequence into two subsequence as at this position. And for these two subsequence separately, we recursively perform the same operation until we, had, we get a binary path tree. So to evaluate our parsing result, we compare with previous neural network based model and other baselines on the Wall Street Journal test set. As shown in the table, our model outperform other methods. The result indicated that the structure induced by our model are more or less agreed with the human experts annotation. Here is an example of the induced path tree. As you can see that our model agrees with ground truth in terms of high level structures, but there will be entering nodes and low level structures could result in some disagreements. So besides the unsupervised parsing, we also evaluate the model on the syntactic evaluation task. This task is provided in Marvin and Linden 2018. This evaluation requires a pre-trained lang language model to assign higher probability and uh, grammatic to a grammatical sentence than uh, an ungrammatical sentence. As shown in the example, the probability for the author lapse should be higher than the probability for the author laugh. 
To better evaluate our model, we split the data set, the test set into two subcategories. It's a, sh it's a sh short term category and a, a short term dependency category and a long term dependency category. The short term dependency means that the pair of dependent words, they are right next to each other. And the long term dependency means that there will be an extra, extra clause between the pair of dependent words. As shown in the table, uh, we're giving the same and limited amount of model capacity. The OLSTM model balances the performance between the short and long term dependency, while STM model biases towards the short term dependency. This result aligns with our intuitions. Okay, to summarize our work, we propose a new order neuron inductive bias such that a higher rank neurons will store longer term information and the lower rank neurons will store shorter term information. To achieve this, we propose a new activation function, QMAX, and a new recurrent model, ONLSTM. And the experiment results show that the latent structure induced from our model aligns with human expert annotation. We also show that the model can achieve stronger performance on downstream tasks given those induced latent structure. Okay, thanks for listening to my talk, and please visit our poster in, if you are interested. Thanks for the talk. Um, let's see, uh, two questions, I guess. Do you have uh, negative results, and or do you think that this is just a general purpose replacement for LSTM that should work better pretty much everywhere? Um, By so negative results, I mean like you know some data set where it didn't work as well as traditional LSTM. So uh, I believe this model uh, has the same cap capacity as uh, normal LSTM. So in, like pretty much most of the work, it should at least as good as LSTM. Sometimes it will be better if the task requires a structure, information, some, something like that. So you would, you would guess that, in general, you should use this instead of LSTM, like, most of the time? Yes, yes. The only problem is that LSTM is like a implement with a very fast optimization for pi both PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow. So maybe if you care about speed, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Okay, um, looks not, and it's about coffee break time, so I think we will uh, wrap up by uh, thanking our uh, speaker again.